I pray that the Bible study will be a blessing to everyone. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. Thank you for gathering us together. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your spirit will open the pages of the scripture and you will enlighten everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, the power in the name of Jesus will work mightily for everyone. We pray you touch every life. And whatever challenge we have tonight, Lord, we pray your word will sweep everything away in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Mark chapter 1 tonight. We'll be studying from Mark. I was still in chapter 1. Tonight, we're looking at verses 21 to 28. Mark chapter 1. Reading from verse 21, it says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, that Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had turned him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. We have seen here the demonstration of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure you're familiar with this activity of Christ, this ministry of Christ. And this manifestation of his glory, of his majesty, and of his power. We're studying it so that we'll see that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that what he did in days gone by, years gone by, is still able to do today. And if you have any challenge in your life, as you are here tonight, the watch of Christ will solve that problem in Jesus' name. And any time you come to a crossroad and there is, you know, the, the devil there, the demon there, the evil spirit there, the evil power there, and they say you cannot pass, so remember that Jesus Christ is with you. And Jesus Christ lives within you. And the power of Jesus Christ will work mightily in your life. Even at that time, all those evil powers that try to stand in your way will clear up in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're looking at Christ's power to deliver and to cleanse the unclean. Christ's power. Christ has power. Whatever challenge your life, spiritual, material, physical, or whatever, Christ has the power to solve the problem. And whatever it is to carry here tonight, the Lord has the power. And because he has the power, you will not go empty-handed in Jesus' name. I thought the church would say, Amen. Amen. Christ's power to deliver. And he delivers everyone. Whosoever comes to him, he will not cast out. You come, you ask, you talk about him, and you quote his promise, and you present his promise before him, you will not be denied. The power to deliver. He delivers. He delivers from every challenge. 
from every problem and from every sin that were brought into this world, everything we met in this world, and they're trying to crouch life out of us, and they're trying to crush our life. As you pray to the Lord, and you mention that name, there's power in that name. All those things will be cleared away in Jesus' name. And he has the power to cleanse. If you're dirty, he'll cleanse you. If you feel defiled, he'll cleanse you. If you feel filthy, he will cleanse you. He cleanses from sin. He cleanses from every defilement. He cleanses from anything and everything that may try to soil our lives. And he'll present us like the white lily without any death and without any defilement in Jesus' name. Christ's power. That power is for you tonight. Christ's power, that power is for me tonight. Christ's power, that power is for your family tonight. Christ's power, that power is for everyone, every loved one, every person you remember tonight. You mention them in prayer, you connect them with the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver them. And the Lord will cleanse them. And whatever it is in your mind, in your memory, every time you remember that dirty sin, that defiling sin, and you feel dirty, tonight is the night of cleansing. And tonight is the night of freedom. He'll forgive you. He'll set you free. And he will cleanse you from every remembrance of those things in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, Christ's power to deliver and to cleanse the unclean. There are three things we're looking at as we look at the passage. Number one is convicting preaching of the unchanging scriptures. It's preaching, convicting preaching. It's convicting preaching of the unchangeable scripture. He preached the scriptures because the scripture is the word of God. And he is the word personified. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. He knew that Bible because he was the originator with the Holy Spirit inspiring the scripture, and then he brought out the scriptures, and he touched the people, and he preached to the people, and his preaching was his authority and anointing, and when he finished, he said, they never heard anything like this before. He's still Christ our Savior. Is still Christ our teacher? Is still Christ our the preacher? Is still Christ the shepherd and the pastor? And he himself, by his spirit, will teach you tonight in Jesus' name. Point number one is convicting preaching of the unchangeable scriptures. Point number two is conquering power over all unclean spirits. Is conquering power. The power that conquers, the power that controls, the power that delivers, the power that sets free. And that power has not changed. Christ Jesus has the power. He has the power to forgive. He has the power to renew. He has the power to destroy anything and everything that will come against your life. He is conquering power over all unclean spirits over how many unclean spirits all and nothing will be able to touch your life as you link your life with christ connect your life with christ his power will walk in your soul walk in your spirit walk in your heart walk in your body walk in your family walk in everything around you in jesus name and somebody said amen, amen. point number three is courage purging and cleansing. He did it that time. He's doing it in the present day. His current purging and cleansing from uncountable sins. Uncountable sins. He still purges today. He does it currently. He does it presently. He does it in every life. Every life that calls upon him today we have his current purging and cleansing from uncountable sins. Thank God you are here tonight and you are free. Thank God you are here tonight and the Lord is going to walk mightily in your life. Somebody said amen. amen. Mark chapter 1, point number 1 now, is convicting preaching 
of the unchangeable scripture. Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 21. You find one word that comes in verse 21 and also comes up in verse 22. Look at this. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught and preached and opened the scriptures to them and preached the word of God to them and taught. Look at verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished at his teaching. They were astonished at his interpretation and application of scripture. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught, that's the word again, for he taught, that's the word again, he opened the scriptures, he expounded the scriptures, he preached to them, he enlightened them, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He taught them. He preached unto them as one having authority. How did he preach? What did he preach? And who did he preach to? And was he preaching today? Was he, was he still emphasizing today? Matthew chapter 4. We're reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 4. Reading from verse 13. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. His preaching was a fulfillment of prophecy. His preaching was a fulfillment of the great expectation that the prophets had already spoken about in the Old Testament. And he came to this Capernaum, and he preached unto them, purposefully he preached unto them powerfully he preached unto them authoritatively not like the scribes and not like the pharisees look at verse 15 this is what is being fulfilled now the land of zabulon and the land of natalim by the way of the red sea beyond jordan galilee of the gentiles the people that sat in darkness saw great light that's the purpose of his preaching they sat in darkness spiritual darkness they sat in darkness superstitious darkness and he came to show light unto them he came to enlighten them and so when he preached he spoke authoritatively to open their eyes to enlighten them and to sweep away the darkness of error and the darkness of superstition and the darkness of tradition it says they saw a great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up the light also brought life because they were in the shadow of death spiritual death they were in the shadow of death perpetual death they were in the shadow of the premature death and he came and he brought the power from heaven he brought the enlightenment from heaven he brought life from heaven so that all the death they feared all that will vanish away and the prince of the power of the air that controls the situation in their lives and they were dying and dying and dying jesus came to put a stop to that and he has come to your house he has come to your life and all the premature death and all the spiritual death he has come to put a stop in your life and his word will bring life unto you in jesus name and then we have been talking about why he was preaching. He wanted to bring an end to the darkness, an end to the death, an end to their superstition, an end to their tradition. That's the why, but the what. Now, what did he preach? Look at this, verse 17. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All the goodness of the kingdom, all the blessings of the kingdom, they could become beneficiaries now because the door of the kingdom is open. And he is the door, and he has the key, and he opens the door of the kingdom for them, and they could enter in. But he preached unto them and said, Repent. But remember, he came to teach the scriptures. 
He came to preach the scriptures. He came to open their eyes to understand the scriptures. And let me show you a sample of what he preached concerning him, the scriptures, the word of God. Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. That's the totality, that's the summary, and that's the entirety of the scriptures. The law and the prophets. The law and the prophets together. Don't you think that I came to destroy the scriptures? I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill all the prophecies you have seen in the Old Testament. I came to fulfill all the promises of God you read about in the Old Testament, I came to fulfill. All the precepts you read about in the Old Testament, I came to fulfill. I didn't come to destroy. I didn't come to negate. I didn't come to cancel. I didn't come to oppose. I didn't come to kill and put to death and bury the scriptures. I came to open it up. I came to fulfill. I came to show you the significance of the scriptures. I came to show you the fulfillment of the scripture. I came to show you the performance of the scripture in your life. Look at verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one judge or one teacher shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled it says there's nothing you read about in the scriptures that is useless that is redundant that is just there every dot of an eye every cross of a t every jot and every title will be fulfilled and he came to explain that to them he says in verse 19 whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of the commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of god but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of god i was talking about the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven and he told them how to enter and how to become great how to become significant in that kingdom when they entered the kingdom but now i was going to tell them that this way tradition will hinder people from entering superstition will hinder people from entering the former life the old life will hinder people from entering that's what he preached look at verse 20 for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. It was very plain, very clear, forthright, and it was truthful and faithful to the scriptures. He didn't, uh, you know, just uh, gloss over the word of God and say, everybody, you can enter. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how you live, you can enter. He said, there'll be righteousness. And it is the righteousness that comes by faith. And it is the righteousness that is pictured and portrayed by the life of Jesus Christ himself. The righteousness must be the inward righteousness. Must be inner righteousness. Must be the evangelical righteousness. Must be the kind of righteousness that comes from the Lord himself. And then is practical. Is purposeful and it is positive because if yours is just like the Pharisees, like the Sadducees, which is uh, only outward but doesn't have in what grace is said, that will not make it. Look at chapter 6 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He preached the scriptures to them, the unchangeable scriptures, and it's still the same scriptures today. The word he preached at that time and the doctrine he preached at that time and the emphasis they laid on the word at that time they still stand today because the scripture is unchangeable if christ was to come here today and preach he will not be preaching as the pharisees as the sadducees he'll not be preaching as the false prophets he'll not be preaching like motivational speakers he will preach according to the word that is unchanging. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. 
take it that ye do not your arms before me to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. He's saying, uh, you know, if everybody were blind, if everybody could not see, and you were to do anything, will you do what you're doing now? If, if nobody will feel what you do, see what you do, comment on what you do, appreciate what you do, reward you for what you do, or say something about what you do, will you do that? Many people, what they do, they do for me to see and he says that kind of life will not get us into the kingdom. You don't do anything that you may be seen of men, appreciated of men. Look at verse 2. Therefore, when thou, when thou dost thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily. I say unto you, they have their reward. Look at verse 19. That's this is what he preached to them. Because it just says he taught. Max says he taught in such a way that the people were surprised and they were amazed, they were astonished, and he said, How does that this man have this authority? Because he preaches with anointing and authority and not like the scribes. This is exactly what he preached, and this is how they made the conclusion. Look at chapter six, verse nineteen, Matthew. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. They never heard anything like that before. They thought they should get everything they could get, spend everything they could spend, bank everything they should bank, and just have everything amassed here on earth. But Jesus Christ came and he said, think about heaven. And he said, think, plan for heaven. And he said, store your treasures in heaven. In verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven was always talking about heaven you see all those pharisees they are not talking about heaven and all the preachers many preachers today they don't think about heaven they don't teach about heaven they don't preach about heaven they don't turn their minds and their eyes and the focus of the people on heaven you know what jesus preached he preached in such a way that if you were to die at the end of that message you preached, yeah, it would have prepared you for heaven. That's what we should notice today. And that's what the Lord is talking about today, that will prepare people for heaven when we preach. Verse 20, but lay all for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is there, where your heart be also come to verse 24 in verse 24 no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon that's what he preached that's what he preached look at chapter 7 and i'm reading from verse 24 Chapter 7, verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and do I say, it, it was telling them that it's not just to hear him teach, not just to hear him preach, they must act on the word. They must listen to the word, apply the word to their lives, and do what they are told to do. If there's something to repent of, they repent. If there's something to consecrate, they consecrate. If there's something to reverse, they reverse. If there's something to make right, they make right. And when we hear the word of God, that's the same thing the Lord is still saying today. We do them. We hear them. We apply them. We practice them. We perform them. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Your spiritual house will not fall, your spiritual house will not collapse. You will not be among the people that just hear and hear and they do nothing about it and it fell not and because it was founded upon a rock. 
but you know Jesus Christ in his teaching he will give you the two sides of the coin he'll say you do it that's the consequence you don't do it there's a recompense there are people that only talk one side of the issue they show only one side of the coin positive good uplifting encouraging motivating there's the other side do it like jesus did it and tell the people the way jesus taught them look at verse 27 verse 26 and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doest them at not it's one thing to hear it's another thing to practice another thing to do and I say to obey. It says, He, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, it collapsed, and great was the fall of it. We have read in Mark chapter 1, verses 21 and 22, that when he finished, the people were surprised. Here is exactly where it is. Look at verse 28. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these scenes, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught, that's the word, he taught, that's the word, he taught them, the young and the old. The men and the women, the priests and the people, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Look at Matthew chapter 13. What he taught. Very important. What he taught. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13, verse 34. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 34, all these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable, speaking not unto them. On the line, verse 35, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world that's why they were surprised what they never heard from their preachers from their priests from their scribes from the pharisees it says i will open my mouth i will utter things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world that's why when Nicodemus heard, ye must be born again, he said, what's that? How is that? How can a man be born again? Things kept secret from the foundation of the earth. That's why when the young man came and said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He told him what to do. He had never heard anything like that before. And he couldn't weigh that. He couldn't assimilate that. And he couldn't get into that. And he went away sorrowful. And uh, so when you hear the teaching of Jesus Christ, it may be something you have never heard. Kept secret from the foundation of the earth. Look at John chapter 7. John chapter 7, reading from verse 45 and verse 46. John 7, verse 45. Then came the officers of the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have you not brought him? Why have you not arrested him? Why have you not handcuffed him and forced him here? Verse 46, and the officers answered, Never man speak like this man. It wasn't talking tradition. It wasn't talking superstition. It wasn't talking religion. It was talking you know, eternal life. It was talking being born again. It was talking righteousness from on high. And when they heard, they forgot they were to arrest him. And they said, never man speak like this man. John chapter 6. 
John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 59. And those things, these things, said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. He taught in Capernaum. He taught them in Capernaum. But you understand, they were expecting to hear what they have always heard. They're expecting to hear a repetition of what the scribes and the Pharisees were always saying. But Jesus didn't go that direction. His own purpose was different. And his own coming was so that he will alert them. He will wake them up. He will judge them. He will convict them. And they will know this is the way to the kingdom. He taught in Capernaum. Look at verse 60. Many therefore of his followers, of his disciples, when they heard, they said, this is an hard saying. It was different from what they ever heard. This is an hard saying. It wasn't what they were expecting to hear. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And they were told in verse 66, from that time, many of his followers, disciples, went back and walked no more with him because he didn't preach what they expected. He didn't say what they expected. He didn't affirm what they had heard and the traditions and the superstitions they had from the scribes and the Pharisees. They said, anything different from what you already know, anything different from what you already believe, they say that's strange, they say that's hard, and because of that, they went back. But thank God I will not go back. Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 7. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 7. Here was their problem. Here was what they were hearing before they came to Christ. And before Christ came to them. And because Jesus will not tell the line of tradition. That's why they misunderstood. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. How be it in vain. Do they worship me teaching for doctrine the commandments of men? They were teaching the commandments of men. You know, there are some moral commandments of men. There, were, there are some a kind of principles of men. That's what those Pharisees were teaching. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. And the tradition of men will contradict the scriptures. And thank God Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior Jesus Christ, the Master Jesus Christ, the teacher that has come from heaven. He will not repeat the principles. He will not repeat the proverbs. He will not repeat all the precepts they were hearing from men because he is the word personified. Look at this in verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well, you reject the commandment of God that she may keep your own tradition. Look at verse 13. Make him void, make him the word of God of known effect by your tra through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such like things ye do. Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, we see what Christ has come to do in his teaching, what Christ has come to do in his, in his exposition of the word of God. We're looking at Luke chapter 13, verse 22. And he went through the cities and the villages teaching. He didn't do any other thing. It was not, uh, you know, with pomp fear. It was not uh, supporting whatever. He was teaching and journeyed toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, at their few that be saved, uh, that person that shouted out and said, at their few that will be saved, it was, she was surprised. If uh, you are telling us that tradition, nobody will go through tra tradition, get to heaven. Nobody will go through superstition, get to heaven. Nobody will follow the outward righteousness of the Pharisees and get to heaven. Who then can be saved? Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. That's what he was preaching. 
If you hear that Christ preached when was here on earth, this is what he preached. If you hear that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that if Christ came back to the world today, if he were to preach in our pulpit today, this is exactly what he will be preaching. Strive to enter him at the stretch gate for many i say unto you i will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and are shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door and say lord lord open unto us and ye shall answer and say unto you I know you not from where she are. I know you not from where she are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught, and thou hast taught, and thou hast taught in our streets. But in taking what he taught, they didn't hold on to what he taught, they didn't repent when he taught them to repent. They didn't believe when he taught, taught them to believe. And so they will say, you have taught in our streets, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not, from where she are, depart from me, or ye that work iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tears, when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God I pray you'll be there I said you'll be there I will be there Matthew chapter 22 we're reading from verse 16. Why did he preach? To get the people focused on heaven and to make them enter heaven. How did he preach? He preached from the scriptures. He preached pungently. He preached powerfully. He preached with authority. And what was his own heart condition when he preached? Matthew chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 16, Matthew 22, verse 16. And he sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true. He never preached any falsehood to please anybody, to get anything from anyone. He never caught the corners of the truth. He never made it smooth. He never made it acceptable. He gave the truth and he said, Master, we know thou art true. Not only that, number two, and teaches the way of God in truth. He didn't teach the way of society, the way of religion, and the way of tradition. He taught the way of God and he taught it in truth. Then, and neither carest thou for any man. He wasn't a respecter of persons in the sense that he wasn't looking at the face of, of the faces of the people. If I say this, he may not come back. If I say that, she may not come back. If I say that, he may not smile at me. If I teach that, he may not accept me. He was not looking for their favor because he cared not for any man. For thou regardest not the person of men. He wasn't looking at their position in society, at their authority in society. He wanted to tell them the truth so that when they hear the truth, they will repent of their sin, they align their lives with the truth, and then eventually they will get to heaven. And if we're preaching like Christ today, that's what we ought to do emphasize the word explain the word preach the word and help the people to understand this is the way to heaven walk ye in it point number two now is conquering power over all unclean spirits we're coming to mark chapter one 
Mark chapter 1, I read from verse 23, is conquering power. Christ has the power. And whatever it is coming from, any demonic spirit, any evil spirit, any unclean spirit, coming from any direction, it'll crush them out of every life tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 1, verse 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. A man with an unclean spirit. A man with an unclean spirit. And it was in their synagogue. And the preaching of the Pharisees could not arouse him, could not stir him up. And the evil spirit abode with him, stayed with him there. Even though he was listening to the scribes and listening to the Pharisees, nothing stirred him up. But now, because Jesus Christ preached the word, and he preached in the power of the Holy Ghost, he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Tell me there what follows. Tell me what follows. Thou Jesus of Nazareth, look at that, even the evil spirit knew Jesus to be the Jesus of Nazareth. You know, the Pharisees were doubting that, and the Pharisees did not even know as much as the evil spirit knew. Look at this, and thou come to destroy us. They believed in the judgment, in the final judgment. And our people say they go to church. They don't even believe as much as the evil spirits believe. I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. This man possessed with evil spirit knew more than the Pharisees. You remember that blind man that was um, uh, made whole and he received the sight. And they said, how did you receive your sight? And the man said, he made clay. And he anointed my eyes, and I went to wash in the pool of Siloam, and I came back seeing. Oh, they said, don't worry about that. We know that man, he is a sinner. And the blind man said, I don't know about that. I've never heard that a sinner opened the eyes of the blind. Since the beginning of the world, I've never heard something like that. Even the evil spirit, even the unclean spirit spoke through this man. I know who thou art the Holy One of Israel. And so, if you don't even believe as much as the evil spirits believe about Jesus, how can you be saved? They believed all that, and they were not saved. Evil spirits believe all this, and they will not be saved because of that. They believe and they tremble. I pray that as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go beyond the evil spirits. You'll go beyond the unclean spirit. Number one, you'll say, I know that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. And then I know that there's going to be judgment on the final day. And it will destroy all the people that live and die in sin. I know that Jesus is a sinless one. Jesus is a spotless one. Is the Holy One of God. Verse 25, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And he obeyed. The evil spirits obeyed. Those who had the word of God come out of, come among them and they don't obey. The evil spirits are gone beyond them because the evil spirit, when he heard, hold thy peace. Keep quiet. Shut up. He kept quiet. Come out. He came out. I pray that the evil spirit will not go beyond you. They will not obey beyond you. And they will not be silent beyond you in Jesus' name. And when the evil spirit, when the unclean spirit had turned him, he cried with a loud voice and came out of him. And came out of him. Christ Jesus has the power. A conquering power he had. Controlling power he had. And the power to cast out every unclean spirit. Mark chapter 3, verse 11. In Mark chapter 3, reading from verse 11. An unclean spirit, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. I hope you believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe. 
I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the evil spirits were not, they were not trying to make people believe something. This is what they knew. Because, you know, Lucifer, their master, had been in heaven before. And the angels that fell with him, that became these unclean spirits, they knew. And the knowledge they had, when they were still in heaven, that's what they are repeating now. Thou art the Son of God. There should be no doubt in your mind. You shouldn't allow the evil spirits to express such confidence and such faith about the Lord Jesus Christ and you see saying I don't know I don't know then when you get to the gate of the final day and you say I want to get to heaven but I didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God the evil spirits will come out and say no you cannot get to heaven even those of us who believe that Jesus is the son of God we're not getting there how can you get there but well, thank God I will get there because I believe because I believe Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe, you will say, Amen. In verse 12, and you strictly charge them that you should not make him known. We're coming to Mark chapter 7. Whatever the evil spirits expressed, and wherever the evil spirits were preaching, Jesus conquered them. And wherever the evil spirits are preaching today, in any life, even this night, Jesus will conquer them. He'll conquer them for you. He'll conquer them on your behalf. They will not bother you again in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 7, verse 25, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet the woman was a greek a syrophoenician pynician and she besought him that he will cast forth cast out the devil out of her daughter but jesus said unto her let the children first be filled. The children of God, they are the beneficiaries. They are the first beneficiaries. And if you're a child of God tonight, this is your right. Deliverance is your right. Dominion is your right. Liberation is your right. And whatever binds you, you'll be liberated in Jesus' name. For it is not me to take the children's bread and cast each to the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Always say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't say no to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever he preaches, yes, Lord. Whatever he emphasizes, yes, Lord. Whatever rebuke he gives, yes, Lord. Whatever correction, yes, Lord. And whatever principle he brings out, yes, Lord. Help me say that, yes, Lord. I can't hear you. Let him hear you. Let those unclean spirits hear you. Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, like he's saying to you tonight, and he said unto her, like he's proclaiming to you tonight, for this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. That messenger of death has gone away from your family. You are totally delivered in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished at his teaching. They were astonished at his uh, preaching, at his proclamation, for his word was with power. His word was with power. And remember, he's still the same. He has not changed. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word is still with power. And in the synagogue, there was a man that had the spirit of an unclean devil. A spirit of an unclean devil. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. 
what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, and thou come to destroy us, I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of Israel. And Jesus rebuked him. He rebuked every negative power in your life. Saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. They have no choice, they have to come out. I said, they have no choice, they have to come out. Verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits. And what do they do? And they come out. They have to. They will always come out. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They are the purpose why they came. They came to hear him. They came to listen to him. They came to hear those unchangeable words of the scriptures out of the mouth of the one that is of the truth. And they were there, and they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And they were healed. And they were healed. And the old multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all and healed them all how many of us and healed them all i said how many of us and healed them all now the question is christ demonstrated that power that conquering power over all unclean spirits now he's going to heaven what happened after he went to heaven? The name of Jesus still carries the same power. And the authority of Jesus is still with his disciples and with his apostles today. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 12. Acts chapter 5 verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in solomon's porch and of the rest does no man join himself to them but the people magnified them and the believers were the more added unto the lord multitudes both of men and women listen to this look at this in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and them on and laid them on beds and couches that at the least what's that at the least tell me tell me at the least why don't you talk at the least say it aloud the shadow of peter passing by the shadow of peter passing by holy ghost inside him holy ghost around him and it spilled over even to a shadow the shadow of peter passing by might overshadow some of them and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto jerusalem bringing sick folks listen to this listen to this and them that were vexed with tell me unclean spirits and what's the final conclusion i said what the final result and what's the power of the shadow of peter falling on them what did he do 
and they were healed everyone i'm looking at you there and they were healed everyone 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 what is the everyone now the lord will touch you in jesus name but you know we need to now understand something when it says they had unclean spirits and then they manifested they shouted they cried the question is is it everyone that has unclean spirits that shouts that cries and are there people that have evil spirits unclean spirits and yet they do something and they say something you will not guess they have unclean spirits and i pray what they say will not deceive you what they say will not suck you into their system in jesus name and wherever that unclean spirit is manifesting with whatever, whatever method that unclean spirit is manifesting, the name of Jesus will cast them out in Jesus' name. Look at Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of idols out of the land and they shall no more be remembered and also i will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land the prophet and the unclean spirit there are false prophets and they might prophesy they might say they're in trance they might say they see visions and the bible says over here it's by unclean spirit and because they say some things that might appear uh, to be correct there are people that will go to them and say see vision for me lay hands on me i have prayed in our church i have not uh, you know got what i was looking for do something for me and they lay hands on you and they pass more unclean spirit into your life God forbid in your life. Look at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Possessed with a spirit of divination. But this one wasn't crying, wasn't cutting herself, and this one wasn't doing anything naughty at all possessed with a spirit of divination methods which brought her masters much gain by so saying the same followed paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation here we are you know those other evil spirits that jesus cast out they say we know you're jesus we know you're jesus of nazareth we know you are the holy one the holy one of god and have you come to torment us to judge us to destroy us before the final day they can say something that appears through they can say something that appears that's all right that's doctrinally correct these are the men and the men the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation but still evil spirit is still unclean spirit is still the spirit of divination and paul the apostle knew Paul the apostle did not come come and join our team come come on you know say that again you're going to be one of our publicity officers that's an evil spirit that's an unclean spirit and there she did many days but paul being grieved taunt and said unto the spirit unto the unclean spirit i command thee in the name of jesus christ come out of her and tell me come out of her tell me what happened and it came out the same hour uh, you need to mark what i'm going to read now in your bible this revelation chapter 16 revelation chapter 16 if you don't have spiritual eyes you may not see 
if you don't have spiritual understanding you may not understand you may think everyone that calls jesus jesus that's a servant of god everyone that walks in miracle here miracle there and they say we're mentioning the name of jesus we believe that the name of jesus has power and you may you know surrender yourself to them and they lay their dirty defiant hands on you and then they pass evil things to you because you're looking for miracle look at revelation chapter 16. revelation chapter 16 we're looking at verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet unclean spirits out of the mouth of the false prophet verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils doing what doing what unclean spirits if they can get you to submit to their master to the devil they'll do anything if they can get you surrender your soul to them and go away from the lord they'll do anything unclean spirits all they want to do is to have other people to follow after them and to follow after their master satan so that they will lead you to the place they're going finally and they don't always fight and they don't always quarrel and they don't always strive and they don't always cause call and uh, cut themselves and they don't always uh, bring blood out sometimes when it serves them they try to do something that looks like a miracle for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle that's the purpose of that great day of God Almighty I pray they will not influence you they will not affect you the evil spirits will not have a place in your heart in Jesus name Matthew chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 43. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. It says in verse 43, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, we have heard of Jesus casting them out, telling them come out, and they come out. And there are people that think, okay, because Jesus has cast out the evil spirit now, I'm free. And I'm free to do whatever I can do now. And if a crack comes in your spiritual wall, the evil spirit that came out, Jesus said, it can come in again. I pray the evil spirit will never come back into your life. Never seize your soul. Never arrest your mind. And never have any possession of you anymore in Jesus' name. Verse 43, and when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, I will return into my house. I will return into my house. The person who has been delivered, that's the one who is calling my house, where he was living before, and Jesus cast him out. That's what he's referring to as my house. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, your heart will not be empty. The promises of God will fill your heart. The word of God will fill your heart. The spirit of God will fill your heart. The grace of God will fill your heart. The love of God will fill your heart. But this other one here, when he cometh, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth, that's the evil spirit, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last stage of that man is worse than the first. That will not happen to you. But it says, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. 
the generation of the people that hear the word of God and they rejected that word of God, the generation of the people that had the word of God and their tradition, their superstition will not allow them to hold on to the word of God. Even so shall it be unto that wicked generation. We're coming back to Mark chapter 1. And we're coming to point number 3 now. His current poaching and cleansing from uncountable sins. We're coming to chapter 1 of Mark, verse 27 and verse 28. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. There's one area of the work of those unclean spirits that we have not touched. They make people unclean. They make people unfit for the kingdom. And they make people defiled. They make people dirty. Unclean spirit will cause unclean language, unclean lifestyle, unclean behavior, unclean habit. And those unclean spirits, that's why when people say, I must be free, I make resolution, I will not do this anymore, I will not do that anymore. They do not have power over the unclean spirit that is controlling the unclean language, the unclean habit, the unclean lifestyle. But Jesus has power. And he will cleanse every one of us. Jesus has power. He will purge. He will cleanse from uncountable sins in Jesus' name. I was waiting for a good, good amen. You see, those, un uh, those sins are uncountable, uncountable. But no matter how innumerable, uncountable they are, Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. Look at Psalm 40, verse 12. Psalm 40, verse 12. For innumerable evils have compassed me about, innumerable, uncountable. My iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the heirs of my head, innumerable, uncountable. Therefore, my heart fails me. Your heart does not need to fail you tonight. Come to Christ, it will purge you. He will cleanse you. Look at Psalm 19, verse 12. Verse, Psalm 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? There's so many. Uncountable, innumerable. They're deep, they're high, they're broad, they're wide. Sometimes they're secret, sometimes they're hidden. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep back thy servant. From presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. He'll manifest power over those uncountable sins, even tonight in Jesus' name. They will no more have dominion over you. And then it says, then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Look at Psalm, 90, Psalm 51 from verse 2. He purges and he cleanses. And when he does, he makes you as white as snow and he makes you whiter than snow. And no stain, no spot of that sin, that defiling sin, that sin that makes us dirty, none of them will remain in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Psalm 51 verse 2, wash me thoroughly for mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. He knew he could not do it himself, but he was appealing to the Lord. He was praying to the Lord that the Lord himself will do it. Wash me and wash me thoroughly. Wash me and wash me perfectly. 
wash me and wash me so completely and cleanse me from my sin. Look at verse 7. Purge me with isop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He knew he could do it and we know he can do it. And we know he will do it in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Psalm 65, reading from verse 2. Psalm 65, verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Is the one that grants us the purging. Is the one that grants us the cleansing. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. By terrible things and righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the sea. Everyone far or near, the Lord will purge. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1. Reading from verse 7, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Listen to this. When he, Christ, had by himself purged our sins, all our sins, innumerable, uncountable, Christ by himself Purchase all our sins, he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. He's still doing it today, he will do it for everyone. Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience. You see that? Is Christ our Savior? Is Christ our Redeemer? Is Christ the propitiation for all our sins? And no matter how many those sins are, he purges us. And he says he has offered himself without spot unto God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Verse 15, and for this cause, if the mediator of the New Testament, the New Covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen. Verse 22, and almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. He has shed his blood, and it is through that shedding of the blood at Calvary that he purges us, that he cleanses us, and he washes away all our guilt, and it takes away all our condemnation. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Upon you. That's the promise of the Lord. He will not fail. He will not fail you. You will not be disappointed. It will cleanse you from every defilement in Jesus' name. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. And from all your filthiness, from all your idols, will I cleanse you. And from all your filthiness, I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. 
and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. Amen. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and uh, do them. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 5. As you come to the Lord, I say, Lord, yes, that's me. I don't have an unclean spirit that torments, but these sins that defile, and these transgressions that defile, and these unclean habits, I try to release myself from them, and I cannot be uh, free by myself. I know you can set me free. Your time has come. It will set you free. I said it will set us free. Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean leaves. Unclean leaves. And it's not the Holy Spirit that made him to be of unclean leaves. It's not the Holy Scriptures that made him of unclean leaves. It's not the Most High that made him of unclean leaves. It is coming from the source of evil. It says, I'm of unclean leaves. And then it said, And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean leaves. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from with tongues from up the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth. It will cleanse your mouth. He will cleanse your tongue. He will cleanse your language. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. And thy sin purged. And thy sin purged. You present yourself tonight unto the Lord. And any area of purging, deep purging, great purging, supernatural purging, spiritual purging, he'll do it in your life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh outside, outward, and all filthiness of the spirit inside, inward, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The blood of Jesus will wash your white than snow. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it. Why? That he might sanctify and cleanse it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. He will cleanse our thoughts. He will cleanse our mind. He will cleanse our heart. He will cleanse our spirit. He will cleanse our soul. He will cleanse our habits. Because that's why he died. That's why he shed his blood. That he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish you will be holy and without blemish because it was thoroughly purged, cleansed, purify every one of us. First John chapter 1, reading from verse 7. First John chapter 1, reading from verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, what will he do? Cleanses us from all sin. Is the one to cleanse, is the one to purge, and is the blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary 
that gets that done. He's been doing it, and he's not tired of doing it. It has come to our turn tonight. Verse 9, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Number one, to forgive us our sins. Number two, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All those people that were cleansed, all those people that were set free from unclean spirit, they came. And they told the Lord Jesus, they wanted the virtue of Jesus to flow into their body. And they asked and they believed, and the Lord cleansed them. And thank God for those of us who are saved. Thank God for those of us who are sanctified. Thank God for those of us who have the victory. But you know, we still need more of the cleansing power of the Lord and more of the purging virtue of the Lord. And as we come and we're saying, Lord, Purge us more, cleanse us more, and make us white as white as snow, and whiter than snow, that no spot and no wrinkle and no unclean sin in any way will attach itself to us. The Lord is about to do it now. I said, The Lord is about to do it now. What is He going to do it? He'll do it for you, He'll do it for me, He'll do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. You must talk to the Lord in prayer. Don't just be a hearer of the word. I know you are not a hearer of the word only. You're a doer of the word. You're somebody coming to the Lord saying, I have heard, I have heard. And he taught them. He taught them from the unchangeable scripture. And they held on to that unchangeable scripture. And they said, yes, Lord, you'll do it for me. You have sickness, he'll take away the sickness. You have the oppression, attack, or whatever. He'll cast that evil sin out and you have uncleanness or whatever it is in your heart in your mind in your life he'll take everything away open your mouth and tell the lord and say lord here am i today here am i today here am i today cleanse me lord i want to be whiter than snow tell him tell him cleanse me lord i want to be whiter than snow and any sin that is hindering my progress in the spiritual life that's uh, unclean habit unclean language unclean thought unclean um, character, whatever it is, O oh Lord, I present myself before you. And I'm asking, Lord, that you'll touch me with your power. That irresistible power, let him touch you tonight. That unconquerable power, let him touch you tonight. And let him manifest his conquering power in your life. He'll do it. You need healing, he'll heal you. You need deliverance, he'll deliver you. You need dominion, he'll give you dominion. He'll give you the power, the power to live in newness of life. And it will set you free. You'll be so free, free, and you'll be free indeed. Tell the Lord, he wants to cleanse your heart. He wants to cleanse your soul. He wants to cleanse your spirit. He wants to purge you thoroughly also makes you whiter, whiter, whiter than snow. Don't hide from the Lord. I don't just stand there. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, from all uncleanness. That name has power. That blood has power. That sacrifice has power. That giving of himself has power. His authority still stands today. His anointing still stands today. His power still stands today. Anything unclean, I cast them out. 
cleanse them of you. Wash them of you. Anything unclean. Anything unrighteous. Anything defiling. Anything evil. Anything having any relationship with Satan. He'll crush them up. He'll destroy them. He'll set you free. Don't allow the evil spirits to have faith, more faith than you have. Those evil spirits cried out. Have you come to torment us? To destroy us? Before that day? We know who you are. You are the very son of God. Don't allow evil spirits to believe in the power of Jesus more than you do. His blood can cleanse you from every sin. His name can destroy every evil sin in your life. He saves, He forgives, He delivers, He sets free, He cleanses, He purges, He'll make you have dominion. Where you have failed before, he'll give you the victory. Cleanse your heart. He'll cleanse your spirit. From all those defiling, unclean thoughts. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The power he manifested in the past is still manifesting today. The cleansing he provided in the past is he providing today. The authority he manifested in the past is still manifest today. Believe him, believe in him, there will be total deliverance, there will be complete dominion. Enter into the kingdom. Turn away from everything unclean. Believe in the blood he shed for you on the cross of Calvary. And you're entitled to the kingdom. And the privileges of the kingdom will be yours. The righteousness of the kingdom will be yours. The purity, the cleansing, the purging of the kingdom will be yours. Victory, dominion that the kingdom provides will be yours. Believe and it's done. Believe and it's done.
In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing people of God said, Raise up your hand for yourself or for somebody you know that you love. And you want the cleansing power of Jesus to reach out to them. And the conquering power of Jesus to reach out to them. And the overcoming power of the blood of the Lamb to reach out to them. Believe in your heart and this moment. I mean the moment of total, perfect, permanent victory for every one of us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the opening of the unchangeable scriptures. Thank you because of your word that changes not, your power that changes not, Christ that changes not, it anointing that changes not, everything about Christ, everything about his sacrifice that changes not. And we come to you with that confidence tonight. Turn every life around in Jesus' name. Lord, we're asking where there's any disease, where there's any sickness, that same strife that God, the people healed in this gone by. Heal every one of your people tonight in Jesus' name. The sick will not continue to say they are sick. Now they are well. Now they are healed. Now they are delivered. Confirm it in every one of their lives in Jesus' name. Where unclean spirits have been tormenting people in their brain, in their mind, torturing them in their hearts, and trying to disorganize their lives, cutting them, even with the spirit of suicide, with the authority of the name of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Ghost, I command those unclean spirits, come out in Jesus' name. And all the destructive works you've been doing in their lives, not allowing them to do anything positive, practical, I command you, stop everything in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for people who want to be totally free from uncountable, innumerable number of sins. They don't even know where to start. And they have tried this method and that method and that method to be free. God of love, God of power, God of anointing, and God of all mercy. We pray for your people tonight. And we're asking, Lord, according to your mercy and your love and your grace, cleanse them in Jesus' name. From all habitual sin, cleanse them in Jesus' name. From all those secret, presumptuous sins, cleanse them in Jesus' name. And from all those overpowering, prevailing sins, they have tried to be free, and they have not been free. Tonight is the night of their freedom. Set them free. Cleanse them completely. Purge every sin out of every life. I will pray, Lord, they'll come into the sunshine of the righteousness of the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, do something new for everyone tonight. That as your people go back home, they'll say, He touched me. He reached out to me. He did this for me. He did that for me. Spiritual miracle, grant unto them. Physical miracle, grant unto them. Total freedom, grant unto them. And the power to go and live in newness of life, give to everyone in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, because we're free. And we're free indeed. Thank you for the answer to our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the weak say, 
let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, and let the sick say, I am well. Did I hear you say that? You remain well, remain whole, remain perfect in Jesus' name.